Welcome back. We are talking to Mother Mew. Uh, we were asked to go to Old Doth. I believe that's what this is going to start. Call of the Desert. So, you're not averse to making a little, to taking a little trip? Well, wonderful. As I mentioned earlier, this the request comes to us from the Adventurers Guild in Old Doth. Once you arrive, seek out Momodi. Momodi, however you want to pronounce it. M O M O D I. The proprietress of the quicksand. Think of her as the Sultanate's version of myself. Chances are she'll send you into the midst of danger, but I have every confidence that you will pull through unscathed. Now, off you go, Mercy, and good luck. Um. Eh, either way. I forgot the airship's right here. I was literally about to run. Uh, to get to the airship in Gridania, just run down the stairs that are in kind of the back left corner of the inn. They go kind of down and then uh, around in about a, a bit of a U, uh, L shape. And we're going to Old Doth. Yeah, I was going to run all the way back to the main crystal. Um, and then teleport straight back down to where I just ran to. The other thing I was thinking is um, using my free teleport to go to Lumsa Laminsa, which would be equally as stupid because. It would still cost 120. I'm not bright. Um, she is next to the Adventurers Guild. So, the like main quest hub in Ulda is the quicksand. Mamodi is a female Lalafell. She's super fun. And in the quicksand there are people playing cards and talking about their adventures and there's leave meets and yeah. Mamodi is a red haired um, kind of has two buns up on top of her head kind of like top and back either side. And she's awesome. Welcome to the quicksand, friend. I'm a tad busy right now, but if you wouldn't mind showing yourself to... Judging by your determined expression, I take it you ain't here for ale. Are you called Mercy Valkyr by ch any chance? Meun sent word that you'd be reporting for duty. She also made a point of calling you the adventure of the moment. That ain't no small praise coming from her. But you didn't come all the way here to listen to my prattle. Doubtless you're eager to get started, so let's talk business, shall we? Call the desert completed. And I just hit 25, so I could get the next Lancer thingy, but since I'm here already, let's continue into into a copper hell. <laughs> cut to black, or cuts and fade black. The petitioner ought to be arriving any moment now. Papa Sean says, God's almighty, another second under that sun, and I would have been set a fire, a tankard of ale if you would be so kind. He is a Lollafell, um, with white, kind of whitish blonde hair, glasses. Mustache. Excellent timing, Papa Sean. P A P A S H A N. Papa Sean? It just so happens the adventurer who will be handling your petition is here. He looks at you. So this winsome lass is the much lauded adventurer, is she? Marvelous. Marvelous. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, lit lady. I am Papa Sean, formerly of the Sultan's Horn. I thank you for agreeing to lend us your aid. Mayhap you'd like to appraise mercy of her mission? Yes, of course. The petition in question was submitted by an acquaintance of mine at Am Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. It relates to an unfortunate development at Copper Bell Mine. The, to be plain, giants have seized control of the place. These giants are of the clan known as the uh, Hect sorry, Hecaton Chires. H-E-C-A-T-O Hecat Hecaton Chires. C-H-E-I-R-E-S. Hecaton Chires. Fearsome creatures who were sealed within the deepest depths of the mines during the bygone throne dynasty. Alas, it seems they have managed to break through the layer of rock which served to imprison them, and now prowl the tunnels where the miners ply their trade. The creatures are justifiably angry about their treatment at the hands of our ancestors, and their presence has forced the suspension of all mining activities on the site. It's no wonder they're angry. Didn't the throne dynasty come to an end over 300 years ago? You know your history well, milady. The people of that age used the Hecaton Hecaton Chiris, Hecaton Chiris 
uh, to work their minds. By way of enchanted helms, they were able to bind the ferocious creatures to their will. But as is often the way in such tales, these enchantments eventually failed, and the slaves rose up against their masters. In a desperate bid to contain the unbridled fury of the Hecatonchiris, our ancestors in induced the collapse of the mine's lowermost levels. So it was that the great giant revolt uh, was ended, buried beneath a hundred thousand tons of rock. Well now, that's got me thinking. I seem to recall there being an article about Copper Bell in, the myth in a Mithril Eye a fortnight or so ago. It said the mines were being reopened so as to meet the rising demand for building materials. Like it's not, our boys dug a bit too deep and freed the giants. Gods, to think that poor creatures are still alive and kicking after three centuries. That's a long time to nurse a grudge. They must be seething. Indeed, and that makes them a danger to us all. There will be no mining at Copperbell so long as they remain. For the sake of both peace and prosperity, they must be subdued. This is the task w which we would have you undertake. I'll not deny that the mission will be rife with danger, but our need is great. And so I beg you, put an end to this sorry business. You nod your head. God bless you. I feared you might have reservations, but I assure you it is for the best. Hmm. In case you don't know, Copper Bell Mines are in western Thanalin. Do take care, you hear? Ah, and one last thing before you depart. An employee of Imag Imagina and Sons is presently at the quicksand. The fellow's name is Painted M Mesa, and he knows Copper Bell Mines well. It may behoove you to seek his counsel. Cutscene over. Painted Mesa. Mesa is a um, Rogadine. I said I, I thought I would look it up, but I haven't done it yet. But Galka, Rogadine, got a two handed axe on his back. Kind of orangish, leathery, um, armorish garb, whatever. Looking for Painted Mesa? You found him. So you're the adventurer who's volunteered to deal with a mess down at Copper Bell, are you? You've got guts, miss. I just hope you've got skills to go with him, because things ain't pretty down there. The Hecaton Shiris have left the place in a right state, and nary a week after mining resumed. I don't know if you know this, but Copperbell was old when the second UI dynasty was still, or Ul dynasty was still young, and it was abandoned centuries ago. If it hadn't been for the shortage of materials needed for the rebellion effort, the concern would never have thought to reopen it. We knew full well about the giants beforehand, but the project went ahead anyway. I mean, nothing could possibly survive being buried under a mountain's worth of rock for three centuries, right? Wrong. Our miners dug up more than they bargained for. One swing of the pickaxe too many and they found themselves in the company of giants. Unless we can subdue them, the nation's glorious recovery will grind to a halt for want of aught to build with. The stone torches are keeping watch over the entrance in case the giants fancy some sunlight and fresh air. One of them will be able to show you the way in. The hope of the nation is resting on you, friend. Best of luck. Baby giants. There there be giants? Here there be giants? I don't remember. What's this thing? Killer in oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Western Thanalin, I would use Thaumaturg skill is probably the closest one. Oh, Chocobo feet is too much. Can I get one? Horizon? Is that is that no uh, well. Actually, yeah. Let's see what happens if we do that. Ah, yeah, that would be pretty good, actually. And, you know, I'm just going to ride it the whole way. So, Western Thanalin is a fairly desertish region. You've got clumps of. You've got a big old giant turtle here. One of those kind of like dome-shaped turtles, uh, adamantoids that they have in other Final Fantasy games. <laughs> but anyway, uh, mostly desert. Um, there's some canyons that you cross uh, on bridges. You've got some axe beaks, um, which kind of look at like a Dimetrodon, if you know what that dinosaur looks like. They have a, a long kind of circular oval frill on their back. Um, but these axe beaks kind of, they, they have a uh, kind of bird-like face. Yeah, I guess kind of like the Metrodons, honestly. But axe beaks have their neck kind of goes up a bit from where it meets their body. And then kind of down a bit more, like kind of a V-ish, U-ish shape into the, into the head. And 
Horizon, where I have just taken the Chocobo to, is like any other outpost, I guess. It's kind of like a bit of a town. They got walls. Um, they use some of the cliff faces around the area for walls as well. And I just got the home point there, or the Ethernet shard there. But yeah, um, mostly desert. There's some cactus this year, cacti. Um, patches of grass here and there. Bushes of various fallish colors and green as well. And then I'm making my way east between some rocky hills uh, into like the mine area. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just go straight into the um, make my own party kind of thing. Stone Torch, a well-armored large human. Silvery iron armor kind of. There's been an incident inside the Copper Bell Mines. We are here to ensure its uh, effects are contained, but for your own safety, I suggest you stay uh, well away from here. What? You're the adventurer who's volunteered to quell the heck of Tenchiris? I didn't think the Papa John would be able to find someone so quickly, if at all. The giants are content to wreak havoc inside the mines for now, but it's only a matter of time before they think to come outside. The sooner you see to them, the better. Make ready as best you can, and enter at will. Which one is Will, sir? There we go. Register. Let's go. Let's go. And the cutscene upon entry is yet another kind of cave looking system, but these are mines. So you've got like uh, mine elevators, mine shafts, a lot of wood holding up. Um, you know, kind of support beams and whatnot. There are ore monsters, so they look like kind of spherical kind of piles of ore with legs coming out of them, and then they have a, I think they have a beak as their, we'll find out in a second. And then Spriggans, huh. oh, they don't, they have like two eye stalks and about six legs. And Spriggans look kind of like long they have long ears akin to a rabbit but even longer and the ears are kind of one of the things they use to make their attacks and these are mostly black almost entirely black but um think of an egg shape that's the body of the spriggan and then two oh wait i picked up the Oh yeah, I said I would play some music on these, so you'd have to hear all the grunts. But yeah, the body's a black, black furry egg shape, and then they got the two um, kind of ear-looking things kind of coming out their head and sticking up. But uh, yeah. anything out. Once again, I don't think that there are any um, voice lines in this one. But I would hate to be wrong. And then rob somebody of listening to them.
giant a hecaton cheery just bust out of a wall um they look more like ogres if you can picture what an ogre looks like i know this is kind of i'm supposed to be describing things for the heart of vision or vision impaired but um if you've ever had described to you what the ogre looks like in the fellowship of the ring the one that you know spoiler alert stabs frodo kind of like that a bit smaller but the kind of the same build um just kind of legs not exactly proportionate to the muscles on the rest of their body and then that one had a uh, viking helmet kind of a spiked although i guess that's a myth that they had spiked viking helmets or the vikings had spiked helmets is a myth Anyway, what you would imagine to be a bike spiking helmet. Oh, sorry, a spiked biking helmet. How about that? A bike spiking helmet. A dumb, really dumb. And there are some lightning spirits which look like three kind of lightning bolts a little bit on top and three lightning bolts a little bit on the bottom uh, kind of rotating sort of around each other and then there's a bit of a lightning kind of ball in the middle that's like holding them together and some bigger spriggans so bigger eggs with longer black bigger sorry bigger furry black eggs egg bodies with longer furry black um, tentacle ears, whatever, their uh, ear stalks, I don't know. And then you gotta pick up some fire sand, put it on the powder chamber. Oh, I don't, need, I don't have enough. Shit. Oh, I hate this fucking fire sand. If you're with other people doing this, like you have more than one person that can remember to grab these things. And I think that's also why I had to go into this stupid side room. Oh, it's gonna make this video longer. And this experience in general is longer with this video. <laughs> Let's see, it's not that way. Okay, so it's way back near the fucking beginning. not here oh my god there's no way there's no way I know it's not up the lift it can't be up the lift Please tell me it's not up the lift. <laughs> On this episode of how not to do Copperville Mines. Yeah, it wouldn't be up the lift because I had to I had to open the door. So, to get onto the first elevator, you you pick up a key that drops from the two mobs that are in front of the door. And then the first blasting 
powder spot. I already looked that way. There's nothing that way. This way. Oh, there's no boss down. I'm so damn annoyed. Pardon my ice punching. something else to kill in this room oh god it was up here oh, oh my god I'm gonna kill myself hey how about you look around in the fucking room that you're in first you dummy so it was just uh, against a wall up a little dirt mound in the room that I started, not the room that I started the entire dungeon in, but the room that I, yeah, you get the gist of it. Uh, we are fighting uh, Kotos. He is a, um, another giant. And his main thing, he'll have a, he has a tank attack, you know, one that just hits the tank and it, it's hardish. He also will spawn. Let's catapult you. Catapult's just a one hit tank, it's not really anything. Uh, oh no, he threw, he threw something to the Thaumaturge. So catapult was a ranged attack. His other thing is that he'll put three large circles. So we are in a circular area. He'll put three large circles, so these yellow circles, that you know radiate out, as if you know as if an explosion is going to happen from the middle of them. But that's just how those circles work. Um, one after the other. So like it'll cover roughly um, the three circles in total. Will cover something like. 90% of the room, so you just have to be in the 10% where it's not. And so you're kind of just running around the room to avoid it. And if you're ranged or melee, you still want to just keep throwing whatever ranged thing you have at it. But he's a he's a giant, kind of same same setup as the one that busts it out. He's got the, the helmet, the Viking helmet. Am I too far away? Okay. Kind of dark, dark skin around the top, like almost like tattooed on top, black tattoos on top. And let's hope for no more stupid stuff from yours truly. I'll just let this thing. So we've gone down another elevator shaft. Um, this room, you, uh, you go to the right or left to start, you'll get your powder, your blasting powder from these caps, the blasting caps that are just bombs. There's also errant souls, they're um, a new thing we haven't attacked yet. They kind of look, they're, they're ghosts, um, they look like kind of um, balloons with, I'm gonna say, Wings that look kind of like they belong on a, on a whale's, they're like whale's fins, and then a tail that looks like a snake's tail. And they're basically ghosts. But then the bombs are your classic Final Fantasy bomb. So, um, but yeah, oh sorry, the body of the Aaron Soul looks kind of like a yellow balloon. That's like the main color of these things is yellowish, glowing yellow. And the bombs basically look like a. A sphere, a glowing red sphere of fire with like fire hair, as if like Duke Nukem hair, you know, it's 
spiky kind of circular fire her. And the bombs drop the fire sand, which we need to pick up and put in the blast in her powder chamber and explode it with the switch. And there's a treasure coffer over here, so might as well. I'm pretty sure if I would make it. Or at least I can do it. Those, those things we got doing those, uh, I, yeah, I made videos on doing those, like, training how to be better in parties kind of thing. Um, the gear we got from that is good for a while. I am level 24 now. So, um, yeah. Uh, this next boss is an ooze. Just basically a... It's not hard to explain it. It's like... In its main form, it looks like a, uh, you know the candy dots? Kind of looks like a green dot. And it'll just morph its form to look like it's headbutting the tank. This fight used to be fun. It used to be, like, there used to be shit going on in this fight. You used to have to pick up, um pick up, I think, bombs of some sort and explode the big ooze and you would explode it further and further, smaller and smaller, until you finally defeated it. And you didn't actually do any damage, really, to the ooze. Uh, with melee or anything like that, the only real damage that you did was through the bombs. So every, every once in a while the bomb would spawn. In the meantime, you're just avoiding stuff and surviving <coughs> This one, he just <clears throat> has a divide thing, a divide ability that he does. And he just pops out a bunch of smaller oozes that after 10 seconds or 5 seconds or whatever, they put their yellow circles on the ground and anything, you should avoid that yellow circle and they explode. He's done it again. interesting than this. Got our 12 ounces of fire sand. Pick up this treasure. Can't use it. I'm picking up some gear for Conjurer, I think. Um, we've exploded another wall with our fire sand. This is kind of like a quartzy so quartz looks like purple quartz basically is the in all the walls not always shiny the shiny version of it but a purple hue to mostly all the walls and then we are getting attacked by pit hipposurfs which look like skinny clawed dogs with wings and living fossils, which look like Ergonite from Pokemon, but um, <sighs> I wish that that was enough of an explanation. <laughs> um, think of Marge Simpson's hair, but that's this dude's head, and, but it's a curved Marge Simpson hair, kind of curves and goes down, and it's made of rock, so it looks like rock hair rock hair cone kind of thing and then it has a couple like tentacles coming out of the front and it's got it's like walking on kind of short stubby tentacles and it's got a couple fish eyes on the front Them if I didn't have to, but. 
couple, fighting a couple more errant souls, those like yellow balloon ghosty thingies and one more living fossil, the Urganite looking dude. Some more hip hit hippo surfs, those dogs, the skinny dogs with wings. Skinny. Like very skinny, like kind of arrow shaped dogs. Um, like the ones that do racing. Um I love how And a giant has joined. He has a shield on his left arm. And is holding a two handed axe and one hand is the other arm. Look at me, I'm so strong. He's got a helmet. Big old teeth. The shield has like a goat face on it. It has the crest on the shield. It's kind of weird. Little things you never really notice. Never really know if you need to notice them until you start trying to describe all the visuals in a game for people. Uh, running kind of down, a little down slope into another, a large circular kind of quartzy area and we've got a cutscene. Slaves, no more, free, free. There is a large, ooh, he's got like a large maul, M-A-U-L, kind of a golden helmet. Same markings as the other giants on his body, though. Kind of reddish, blackish tattoos. And his weapon of choice, and that's the only weapon he has, is like a giant hammer with gold, gold, cir gold spherical spikes on like the bottom of the ha of the shaft, and then the top is like a. It's got the back end of it is like a a, a black ball and the front of it is uh, all gold gigantic has spikes on it gold and black not not, not pure gold huh. he has at least one attack where he will hit the entire area except for just a little bit around him because he's got such a large weapon and then his other attack is going to attack the area around him first and then he spawns a bunch of other circles of secondary like explosions he ruined my limit break too And then he's got like a, just a regular tank buster single target attack. And he's also got a conal attack, so he'll turn to face, I would assume, a random DPS and use it. <coughs> Happened to face all three of my, myself, the Thaumaturge, and the Conjurer, because we were all grouped together. He just did his his circular AOE the round like that hits in his area and then just bombs again and now once again he's doing his uh, hit everything in the room except for right around him because his his hammer his maul is too long he can't he can't wield it close into his body giant down he gets all woozy and then falls to the floor and then explodes into nothingness, into shadow. All the bosses have been doing that, by the way. They've all kind of been like exploding into dark and or black and purple shadow. I've learned full thrust. Yay, that's my combo finisher. Wow, 
that time. And what's it gonna pick up on? Ooh. Already got that. Cool. Bye. Piece, uh, non player character team. Yeah, finish this one up because I got some food cooking. So, let's, eh. I can't decide which is going to be faster. I think that using my free teleport to go to Limsa Lominsa and then teleporting over to the airship landing in Limsa Lominsa and then flying over to Old Dog would have been faster. It would cost 120 gil. Isn't a big deal because I'm up to 15,000 now. Like I said, not a whole lot of... Um, of gill expenditures that I've run into is you know, no no real no real problem there, but I am close enough to Horizon. Uh, I'm just gonna take a Chocobo from there for five gill, I think. Yep. people in my free there's one person in my free company that's shouting well shouting using caps lock to say I love this game hmm, do I have any rumble probably not yeah and here's the dish one soccer tomorrow morning was moved to a different park it was moved this morning too but this morning was so ugly and cold I just decided to do uber eats instead <clears throat> which is currently my normal uh, my only way of making money until December 5th I got a new job that starts on the 5th I gotta pass a test for it but I also have to have to ask my onboarding specialist if um, I have to I don't think I have to because continuing education CE shouldn't be what I'm doing right now because this is like primary education it's not continuing and it's the first time I've had this education so but I want to make sure that I don't have to do that I believe the leader of my free company is called Tattoo Baby. The company's abbreviation is Hero. Um, that's not an abbreviation, sorry. That's like the shorthand, but Fairy Tale Academia is the name. I When somebody's got a good name for it, I, don't, I usually like say, yeah, cool. Oh great, Painted Misa has a um, cutscene attached to it. Fade to black. Ah, the conqueror of Copper Bell returns. Thanks to you, our mining operations can resume, and Old Da will have the materials she needs to rebuild. The entire nation's in your debt, friend. I'll share the good tidings with Papa Sean the next time I see him. As for you, you'll want to report to Momodi. It'll do the woman well to see you alive and in one piece. No! Somebody's screaming from off. It's a it's a young woman in a white robe with with the hood up. She's being harassed by a, a human male with the pompadour kind of looking haircut, black black pompadour. He's got robes of red and black. Shut your mouth, you thieving little swine! You stole from me. Don't even think to deny it. P please, sir, I didn't steal nothing. I, I bought this. I paid for it with my own coin. What rot. You refugees are all the same. Couldn't afford maggoty mole meat, much less a choice cut of dodo. I'm going to say it one more time. Give back what you stole, or I'll make you wish you've, you've never set foot in this town. At this point in time, you've... You've... You've arisen? No, you've, you've arrived. Sorry. Wow, we're... we're by rights, I should turn you over to the brass blades, you know. 
help keep the streets safe for law-abiding citizens. But I'm a reasonable man. If you agree to serve me in whatever capacity I require, the authorities needn't hear of your crime. His thugs laugh behind him. They all take a step towards the woman in white robes. But, but I ain't done nothing wrong. Twelve is me witness. She looks to people for help, and everybody kind of takes a step back, except for you. You're stalwart. But please, adventure, help me. I beg of you. I swear on my mother's grave, I didn't steal nothing. I bought this with the coin I'd saved. I only wanted to treat my children to a decent meal. One of the thugs steps toward her and, like, starts to do macho poses. And you step in front of him and them. Who the hell's are... And who the hells are you when you're at home? The dog? This dog's master? I believe he's referencing you. I've had enough of this mummer's farce. You lot, teach him a lesson. You lot, teach him a lesson. The thugs want to do battle. I will oblige them. This is a long video. You guys can all attack at the same time, I ain't worried. It's too bad this is level capped, because I could have used my finisher. Kind of, kind of annoyed that I can't. Apparently his thugs are a bit dr drunk as well. Only one attacks you at first, and he's kind of a hand-to-hand, -hand, big old Rogan guy. And then he's like, oh, why are you guys watching? Oh. Right, help me out. Oh. Let's take out that guy. Oh. And in a matter of seconds, they're all gone. Dead. Kill them. Fade to black again. You get to watch them falling on their butts. I ain't getting paid enough for this," says one of the bodyguards, thugs. "Hey, where where the hell do you think you're going?" says the pompadour man. The lady in white robes. "Thank you, kind adventure. Thank you thrice over." You get a bit of a headache, and the screen goes bl blurry and then white. You're seeing the outside of Ulda with some tents outside of it as well. Could be some refugee tent. Young city dweller says, I'd swear there were more re refugees than when I last looked. And you wouldn't be mistaken, says another. But it's been five years since the calamity. Why are they only coming here now? It's simple, really. While a number of hamlets survived the immediate aftermath of the calamity, many were no longer able to support their communities. The residents found their lands had either been rendered barren or cut off from trade routes, and problems like th those aren't easily solved. Though they tried to make the best of it, it was only a matter of time before they were forced to abandon their homes and seek a new life in the city. I see, says the young city dweller. But the calamity affected the whole realm, didn't it? Is the same thing happening in the other cities? If the talk is true, yes. Though perhaps our situation is more pronounced, Ulda has a reputation for being prosperous, so it's natural that the refugees would try their luck here first. My heart goes out to them. It truly does, but I would be lying if I said that I wasn't apprehensive. I hope their presence doesn't foment, foment lawless, lawlessness in the city. Well, if things do take a turn for the worse, we always have the immortal flames. I dare say the brass blades would welcome their help. The heroes who fought the Garlean Empire? Patrolling the streets for riffraff? They may well come to that. Impoverished and desperate as they are, you may be sure that some of the refugees will turn to crime. You know what this place is like. If you've no, co if you've no coin, you've no hope. <sighs> what will become of our city? Not all refugees are bad, mind you. Some are able to find employment and lead honest lives. Dodo Tenderloin. Get your Dodo Tenderloins. Guaranteed cheapest in Thanalan. Thank you for your custom, madam. Please come again. He is talking to the white-robed woman, who apparently has bought dodo, dodo tenderloins. 
Looking around, you think that Old Dawa was well on its way to recovery. But peer through the veil of prosperity and you'll see no end to the misery and suffering. And then that scene fades to black. Er, madam, are you alright? You're back in your in the present. You nod to the white robed lady. What what now? You mean to threaten a defenseless a defenseless citizen? You explain to him what you've seen. What? Sar buy that meat, you say? That that's absurd. I, as did I. Leave the poor woman alone, you damnable vulture. H who said that? You look around. Don't see anybody yet. <clears throat> she gets frustrated. <clears throat> well, I will overlook this, but just this once. And he runs off. Gods bless ye, adventurer. If you hadn't come along when you did, who knows what that monster might have done. It don't bear thinking about. And she walks off. Boom. A lot of people standing and watching. Some of them cheering. Kind of lame. We have another cutscene of you kind of just standing around. And then you hear, case closed. Ida. Hello again, Papalimo. We've been keeping a close eye on you ever since you left Gridania. Oh shit, I, I clicked through one of them. God damn, I hate when I do that. But more importantly... You were always ready to help those in need, even if you didn't stand to earn a gill by doing so. You po you are possessed of all the qualities we seek in an adventurer. Of this we are convinced. Even if you were kind of dragged into this business with a dodo meat. Yes, thank you, Ida. <clears throat> and then there is the matter of your gift. I dare say you are curious as to the nature of the vision you were bore witness to a moment ago. Well, we can help you to understand it. You're not the only one with that power, you know. We have a friend who has it too, and we'd love for you to meet her. And meeting her is only the beginning, for we would also have you lend your strength to our cause. In return, we should be glad to assist your adventuring endeavors in whatever way we are able. Should you decide to take us up on our offer, and I sincerely hope you will, pray speak with Mamodi. The proprietress of the quicksand is a good friend of ours. She will tell you where to find us. He waves. Wait a minute. We haven't even told you the name of our order. We're the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, Defenders of Justice. Oh, but, but don't tell anyone, except for Mamoni. She knows already. And she walks off. Oh my gosh, can I turn this in yet? I can... So, I've been... My kale has been on the lowest setting on, on the stove top. And I'm trying to soften the kind of like tougher parts, like the, the, the stems. It's been 40, it's been 50 minutes on there. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's going to be like when I get there. Hmm. Scenes like that are becoming even more common, says Momoni. I'm afraid. Don't worry, though. If you work hard, you'll probably be all right. She's talking to some other adventure. Saying that, if you ever find yourself in a spot of bother, come and see me. Just don't go pestering me every time you graze your knee, okay? Of course, I do enjoy hearing tale of gentlemen's woes with the women folk from time to time. Don't we all? Unless it's you. Ah, oh, mercy. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was just providing guidance to a fresh off the carriage adventurer. But gods, it's good to see you safe and well. To look at you, no one would ever guess you'd been hard at it with giants in the dark. You're every ilm the adventurer Meun said you'd be, mercy. The station master will be overjoyed when he hears the news. Oh, before I forget, there's a lass here who wants a word with you. Didn't actually know your name, but here in her description, I knew who she meant right away. It is a gal that looks kind of like she'd be a black mage, but her, her robes are brown. Brown mage hat. Th thank you for sparing your t the time. I realize you don't know me, but I've been longing to speak with you for a while now. My name is Ida. I'm an adventure. It's Edda, E-D-D-A. I'm an adventurer like you, though I'm not very good at being one, if truth be told. Anyway, I was adventuring with my friends in Gridania when... When... I, I'm sorry. We were in Gridania when the leader of our party was killed. His name was Avir, and he and I were to be wed in the spring. You may not remember him, 
But to say that he remembered you would be an understatement. He would sing your praises from dawn to dusk. He saw you for what you are, you see, an adventurer's adventurer, and swore that he would be like you one day. She looks down to the side. I believe that he would have succeeded. I had a fiend not robbed him of a chance. Since that day, I have thought long and hard about giving up adventuring. But when I think of the woman you are, of all that you have achieved, I think that I am inspired, just as Avir once was. And so I've decided to start again as an adventurer. I will go back to the village of my birth and begin my training anew. But I wanted to meet you first, to, to ask your name. Mercy Valkyr. I shan't forget. Thank you, Mercy Valkyr. I pray that we will meet again. Fare you well. That was the conjurer that let her tank die. Turns out the tank was her fiance. That's I forgot. I don't know if I ever read that text that closely. Um, adventure and be a cruel, bleeding business. Time was I didn't know why anyone would bother. When they first asked me to take charge of the guild here, I didn't want aught to do with you lot. Thought it'd be a, pay a right pain in the arse looking after y'all. But against my better judgment, I decided to accept the post, and I'm full glad I did. I feel privileged to be a part of your lives. And that goes double for yours, Mercy. For yours, Mercy. Uh, what do you say? You want to know about the signs of the seventh dawn? They're beginning to move in earnest, then. Listen, Mercy, the Scions ain't no ordinary folk, and the work they do ain't no ordinary work. I know full well how capable you are, but even you would think twice about attempting some of the stuff they do. Knowing that, if you're still uncertain you want to get involved, I'll tell you what I can. Gosh, Into a Copper Hell is finally done. 52 minutes later. End of recording. I gotta go.